So today, as part of my retro unboxing series, I'm going to be unboxing the Intel Desktop Board D850MD. This is for the Intel Pentium 4 processor technology for the cutting edge of the internet. So this product is uh, definitely engineered to make the best use of the cutting edge of the internet, okay? So that means that it includes, da da da, LAN. Intel Pro 100 LAN connection, Norton Internet Security, SoundMax with SPX audio, and four back panel USB 1.1 ports. Check that out. It also has NTI CD Maker 2000. This product is intended to be professionally installed, so um, unless you're a professional, don't install it, I guess is what they're trying to say. Okay, so. It, the D850MD combines solid performance with support for Intel Pentium 4 processors in the 478-pin socket designed with the Intel 850 chipset, harnesses the full bandwidth and performance of RD RAM memory into a micro-ATX form factor. Awesome. So RDIMS, that means we've got support for dual Rambus channels with four RDIM sockets for PC800 and PC600 RD RAM up to two gigabytes. Okay, we have a communication and networking riser support, an AGP connector, Intel Rapid BIOS boot, ultra fast ATA100, that's pretty ultra fast, and then we have three PCI slots. Okay, is there anything else on here that could be relevant? No, I don't think so. Why don't we go ahead and get this baby open? You can see it's got like some some cool text on the front about 400 megahertz front side bus. Yeah, the front side bus is is dead and gone. Okay, so inside we find an IO shield which looks very much like the IO shields that we have today. Then we have an Intel desktop board. I'll say the usual thing even though I don't know how applicable it is. You should download the latest drivers off the Intel website. Uh, if they still have drivers available for this board. You can see that the sticker is actually a little bit yellowed, like for, for context, there's something white next to it. So uh, this gives us the general layout of the motherboard. I can't tell which way is actually up. Maybe it's this way. Yeah, there we go. So uh, rim connector, secondary IDE, primary IDE, AGP, socket. Okay, that's pretty good. Next we have the quick reference guide. Ooh, interesting. Installing the IO shield. Hmm, I don't know how much interesting stuff is going to be in here. Maybe something about the warranty. So I can talk about how the warranty is definitely gone. Uh, it's in a few different languages. Okay, let's lose that. We'll have a look at the board itself shortly. Okay, we've got a couple of IDE cables and one floppy cable. There's the floppy cable. Ooh, gray cables. How very 90s. And we've got a couple of IDE cables. Ah, high tech. Okay, so you can see one of the IDE cables is an 80 pin cable. That means that one out of every two of these cables are actually just uh, blanks, they're ground cables. And those are intended to uh, prevent interference from one cable to the next. So that's for high speed ATA100 connections. Whereas this, for optical drives is a 40 pin connector. So even though they have the same connection, they um, this one's not optimized for low interference. There, there's your, um, oh, I don't know what this is. I haven't seen this before. This is actually a little bit before my day to be perfectly honest with you. So I'm not going to be able to provide quite the amount of insight that I would normally be able to with a retro unboxing because this is too retro even for me. So okay, oh okay, this was mentioned on the front of the box. So this is some kind of um, like fastener for the AGP card. See normally we have these built in these days but this seems to be like a, like a not built in one. So you put it on to the onto the connector or something. Okay, I'm not gonna force it because even though it's old, I don't really wanna break it. Okay, so let's see, what do we got? We got a socket 478 supporting the cutting edge Pentium 4 internet processor. Then we've got four, um, I'm gonna cheat. What is this for? Yeah, 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 sorry. Four RD RAM slots supporting dual channel. 20 pin ATX connector, there's your floppy connector. Two IDE connectors for up to four hard drives. 
Uh, presumably supporting raid, but you know what? Aboard this old? No, probably not. Probably no raid support. Okay, and then we've got ah an internal USB header, so you can hook up cutting edge front USB. And then you've got a fan header, a motherboard uh, battery, and then some jumpers. That's probably clear CMOS. That says config. Maybe it's to config the BIOS. I don't know what this is, and I don't know what this is. That's okay. Then we have three PCI slots because this is well before PCI Express took off, and an AGP slot. So that means that we can hook up our cutting edge DirectX 9 or 7 or 8 graphics card. Then we have a Northbridge um, chipset cooler, which seems to have like a hold down on it. So that, oh, that comes off. So you can actually, let me see. Well, I mean, you know, it's not like anyone's going to care if I damage this thing, so I'll just, there we go. Okay, so you can actually take off the Northbridge heatsink that easily. And uh, let's have a look at the date on this chip here. You can see that it is marked Intel 00. So this is from 2000. That's uh, when that chip was manufactured. Very cool. Very, uh, very internet cutting edge. Okay, so um, let's see what else we've got on this motherboard here. We've got an Intel P4 connector. That's a four pin connector. And then I think that pretty much takes care of what we've got on the top of the board. Now here's the I.O. panel. We've got a PS2 keyboard and mouse, two USB 1.1 ports, a couple serial ports, a printer port, haven't seen one of those in a while, a couple more USB 1.1 ports. There, that's your internet connection. Very cool, how high tech. And then we've got support for, I believe they're saying 5.1 audio. No, AC97. I don't think that is even configurable to 5.1. So there's mic and then line out and then uh, speakers. Excellent. Thank you for checking out.